Do you want a Raspberry Pi media server, but you're afraid that your SD card won't last? Well, today we're going to show you how to do a USB install on a SSD of Open Media Vault to have a super fast for Raspberry Pi media server. First of all, I'd like to thank all the patrons of the channel who have either supported me through following some of the affiliate links below or through PayPal. So the first thing we need is a Raspberry Pi. We need an adapter if you don't have one for your SD card. And so the Raspberry Pi takes micro SD cards. So that's what we have in there. We need a power supply, an SSD, and a SATA to USB 3 adapter. And for me, I have this Raspberry Pi rack, which has these little trays. And so for me, I'm going to mount the SSD on the bottom here. First thing we need to do is download some software. And so just Google Raspberry Pi OS, and this will come up. Scroll down to download for Windows, if you have Windows or Mac, etc. And this is the Raspberry Pi imager. So the Raspberry Pi imager is what we're going to be using to write our images to our SD cards or our SSDs. So this is very important. Next, download PuTTY, which is a simple SSH client. It's easy to use. There's other alternatives to PuTTY, but I like it because it uh, remembers your IP address of your server. So the first part of these directions where we set the USB to boot are different for the Raspberry Pi 3 and Raspberry Pi 4, but they're both very simple. Just the steps will be backwards to get it to accomplish this. So what I'm going to do first is do the Raspberry Pi 3 and then we'll do the Raspberry Pi 4. So for the Raspberry Pi 3, we need a micro SD card and an SD card adapter. And then that will go into our SD card reader and we're going to plug this into our computer. So we want to open up the Raspberry Pi imager and click on operating systems. Click Raspberry Pi OS Other. And then scroll down to 64-bit light. Choose your storage. Click on that. And then we're going to go down to this little wheel. Click on set host name and change your name to something that you will remember that doesn't conflict with other things on your network. Enable SSH. Set a username and password. And that set locale settings and then save. And then click write. So what's happening is the Raspberry Pi imager is writing the Raspberry Pi Lite OS, which is the without the GUI. So for us, we don't want the GUI because it won't work for what we're going to be doing. And it's making it so we set our SSH and we can log into the Raspberry Pi and run some commands that we have to do to make it boot from USB. Once that's done, pull that out and then insert that into your Raspberry Pi. And this is actually the hardest part. So for this next part, we need to plug our Pi into the network, and then we want to plug it in and turn it on, and we're going to SSH into it. So after a few minutes, uh, that will be up and booted, and we're going to go to our router and get the IP address. So for me, the address is 192.168.8.183. We're going to type that into PuTTY, and we're going to save that so we can log in easily next time. And then we're going to click Open. Click accept and then log in as your user and your password. So next we're going to type in echo program USB boot mode equals one sudo t a slash boot slash config text. So what this will do is add a line at the end of the boot uh, dot text that will make it so we boot from USB from now on. Then hit enter. Next, type in vcgen cmd otp dump pipe grep17 and then hit enter. And you can see here it says 17 colon 3020000a. And so that means it will boot from USB now. Just to make sure we're going to sudo reboot and check again. 
So sudo reboot, hit enter. It logged us out of our Raspberry Pi. So we can close that. So now we're gonna wait a few minutes for it to reboot. Then we're going to back to PuTTY, log in and check it again. So we'll click on our save session, the Pi 3, we'll load that. And then open, log in again, put in the vcgen cmd command again, hit enter. And we still have that 30, 20,000 A. So now the Pi 3 will now be booting into USB mode. So now let's do the Pi 4B and see how it's just slightly different. So again, we need our micro SD card, our adapter, and we need to plug this into the computer. So we're gonna do something a little different this time when we choose OS, we're gonna scroll down and miscellaneous utility images, then bootloader, and then USB boots, choose our storage, click on that, and then write. Next, we're going to insert that SD card, micro SD card. And then we're going to plug in the Raspberry Pi. And basically when this is done, which only takes a few seconds, it will start blinking. We'll plug that in. Now you can see that is blinking there. And so that means it's done. So we can unplug that, pull out that SD card, and we don't need this SD card anymore. And so what we're gonna do now is take our SATA to USB adapter, plug that in, and we're gonna plug this into our computer and go back to the Raspberry Pi imager. So click on operating system again, go back, and then back up, and Raspberry Pi OS, and 64-bit light. Pick our hard drive. Set our host name. Enable SSH. Username. Password. Then set our locale and then save. And then write that. So that will take a few minutes. Once that's done, then we just need to plug in our USB drive. Make sure we do it into the, the blue port, that's the USB 3 port on the Raspberry Pi 4. And so I just wanna show you this. So this cable seems long, but compared to my first cable that I got, this one is quite short. So I bought a few of these, so I'll leave a link in the description to one of the shorter ones. What I find is twisting this around makes it quite a bit shorter. Now what we're going to do is plug in our ethernet cable and our power supply, and then we'll log in. So after you've given that a few minutes to boot up, then we're going to go back to our router, find the IP address. So for us, it's 192.168.8.151. We're gonna type that into PuTTY. We're going to call that Pi4, and then save that. Then click open and accept. Then we're going to log in as our user and our password. So now that we're logged in, the directions from now on are the same for the Pi 3 and the Pi 4, and probably any other Pi after this. Uh, so basically what we're going to do now is run a script that will install Open Media Vault and Open Media Vault Extras. So let's do that now. So for this step, you need to go to omvextras.org, click on the Raspberry Pi install, and then scroll way down the page because the directions have changed since they did this. And here where it says install OMV, this is where we wanna stop. And what we wanna do is copy this line, go back to our terminal, paste that in, and then hit enter. So what it's doing now is downloading all the files for Open Media Vault and OMV Extras and basically setting up the system to a certain degree. And this is gonna take a while, so 
time for a cup of coffee. Okay, so once that's rebooted, we need to log out. There's our new IP address that's changed by one. So let's type that in. And that takes us to the login screen. So the login ID is admin and open BD Vault. Click login. Next, we have to set up our dashboard. So we'll click on settings page. And we're going to do a few of these things. Then click save down to the bottom. And that will be our new dashboard. And you can change these at any time by going up to user settings and then dashboard to change them again. So if you watched my other Open Media Vault 6 video, you'll notice this is a little different because actually quite a bit of it is done for you already. So let's just take a look. So Workbench, again, we're gonna change our logout time. So then we're not logged out all the time. Then click Save, and then the check mark, and then Yes. And this is also where we would put our SSL certificates. And now if we want to change the admin password, we click right there and change the password. Next, go on date and time, and it's already set to America and New York for me. We can set notifications here. Uh, we put enable, put our SMTP uh, server, and then down below our primary email, and then click save. And these are the things you'd be notified about. Power management. What happens with the on and off button? And we're going to say off and then click save. The schedule task under power management lets us save set times where we can reboot, shut down, or stand off. Monitoring enables you to collect system performance statistics. Schedule tasks are for any scripts that you want to run regularly. Certificates are for SSH or SSL certificates. Update management are our updates. For this, we would click the down arrow and then confirm and yes. Once that's done, click close and that will refresh the UI. Settings under update management uh, allows us to get pre-releases or community maintain updates. I don't suggest doing that if you're a beginner. Plugins. So plugins are sort of extra little programs that can actually extend the system and make things a lot easier for you. So we'll go over one we need right now and sort of quickly go through some other things that are on here. So if we go to the top right, we're going to type in root and the share root one, we're going to click on that. And so when we click on it, it turns yellow and we're going to download that. Once that's done, it will reset the UI again. We'll go back to system and plugins. And if we type in root again, we can see now that that has a green installed next to it. And so what this allows us to do is actually run our whole system off of one disk. So basically, Open Media Vault only takes about eight gigabytes of storage on that one terabyte SSD that we have. So this makes the rest of that disk available, which we'll see in a second. Another one you want to install is SimLeaks if you're going to be doing Docker. And after that's installed here, we're just going to go down here. There's some backup programs you might like. Antivirus. Uh, instead of installing Docker Compose, we're going to install Portainer, which will also install Docker. Uh, you can add in extra CPU temp and stats. There's a downloader, file browser, uh, flash memory. Flash memory is designed for uh, thumb drives and SD cards, and so it makes it so there's less writes to that physical memory if you want your card or uh, drive to last a long time. OneDrive enables you to synchronize with Microsoft Cloud Storage. Reset Perms enables you to reset your permissions on your folders. I find this handy. Next, let's go to OMV Extras. So OMV Extras settings are for adding uh, testing repo or backports for OMV Extras, Docker. And so we can install that actually by installing Portainer. So we'll do that. Click Install. Now, how you 
access portainer is actually you go back and you click on open web and then that will take us to the portainer GUI. So Yacht and uh, portainer are ba both basically easy ways to add in uh, dockers which are programs which are sort of isolated all by themselves. And so what I'll do is I'll go over both those in future videos. Next is network and we have general and there's our host name. If we want to change that, we would do that here. Shows us our interfaces. If we want to have a proxy or a firewall. And here we'd set the firewall rules. Next is storage. And so we'll click on our disk. So there's our one hard drive. If we have a mechanical drive, we can click on that, click edit, and then change power management, acoustics, spin down. Uh, I don't need to do that though, because I'm using SSD. Smart is for setting the statistics to monitor our hard drive. So here we would enable that, add our devices, and schedule any tasks to monitor the hard drives. Software RAID uh, we do not need because we have just a single disk on a Raspberry Pi. So we click on file system. Here we have our root shared file system. So the extra on that root disk. Here you can see it's 877 gigabytes out of the one terabyte. Next we'll go to shared folders. We'll create a shared folder, call it data. Pick that share. And then we're gonna change this everyone read and write to make it as easy as possible. This is server is not shared on the internet and click save. And then uh, apply and yes. So now we have a shared file. And so now we're gonna to go to services. The plugins we added up above are now in here. So I'll explain these. FTP is for FTP sharing. Flash memory, again, is to prevent your system from uh, wearing down your SD card or your USB thumb drive. NFS is so NFS sharing. RSync is to back up to different servers. SMB is for Windows Network Sharing, and so we're going to enable this. Click Save. Then we're going to click on Shares, and we're going to create a share. And we're going to click right there. It's going to go on to that rootfs data. We're going to make it guess allowed, again, because we're not on the internet. Scroll down to the bottom and click Save. Now if we go to our network, now we see our Raspberry Pi 4. Click on that, there's our data folder. And let's just see if we can add and delete to this. So we'll create a new folder, call that folder. And let's see if we can delete it. And let's click Yes. And so there we can add and delete to our folder on our network. We'll go down to SSH. Those are our SSH settings. If we wanted to change that port, it'd be right there. Sim links is basically if we want to change the name of our hard drives to make it easier uh, for to remember them, we can do that here. And I'll make another video pretty soon about how to do that and why we want to do that. Down below we have users, so settings. So if you want to enable a home directory, this is where we would do it, and we do. Now if we go over to users, we have our one user that we created at the very beginning uh, when we installed the Raspberry Pi OS. And if we click on plus, we can create, add more users this way. Groups is simply creating groups. Diagnostics give us the system information. Logs. Uh, remote access, processes, services, reports, and, and performance statistics. So basically that's your brief, brief introduction to Open Media Vault and how we get it to run off of USB on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.